Welcome to the Angelscapes podcast, where you're encouraged to uncover and develop a direct connection with your soul's power, wisdom, and spiritual intuition that is ready to blossom. We'll explore new ideas, compelling tips, and real steps to help you learn simple spiritual practices. We're a safe place to learn more about accessing your soul's power with education and spiritual wholeness that could bring more clarity to your life. Now here's your host, a practicing medium, Akashic Records practitioner, spirit artist, coach, and mentor, Dr. Reverend Nancy Smith. So do you feel a, a wound up tighter than the top? That's an old saying, if you know what I mean. But do you know how to decompress? Um, welcome to Angelscapes, and I'm your host, Nancy Smith. Um, joining me in this episode is Leslie Hoffman. Uh, we're going to talk about decompressing after long hours of caretaking, whether you're a, a spiritual provider caretaking, doing readings or mentorships, mediumship, or whether you are a uh, a physical caretaker, like in a nursing and caring for people who, who need your help, or you're a psychologist, or you're just taking care of a lot of family members. Um, we're going to talk about the need for de decompressing, self-care, and we will talk about a spiritual aspect and some spiritual tools for doing that. So let me um, introduce you to Leslie. Uh, she um, is no stranger to the metaphysical world. She Her abilities um, start with Sorry, when she was a kid, I'd like to hear that story. She uses her connections to transform individuals who are feeling out of place and struggling to empowered, heart-centered, spiritually-minded mavericks. She's a transformational um, compass person, um, my kind of person. She has uh, she is a self-empowerment facilitator, intuitive, um, heart-centered coach. She does mediumship. She's a psychic guidance. She does grief release. She does angel channeling. I don't know. It's all this really cool stuff and energy movement healing. There's some powerful modality. She uses it all under the um, umbrella of empowerment, spiritual empowerment. She is the founder and CEO of an organization organization and subscribed subscription base. I can say all these words. Membership um, called a group, <clears throat> a group called Women Overcoming Obstacles, a female empowerment society for spiritual and metaphysically minded women. Um, she has um, a kind of a, a entry level one that she's going to talk to you about and, and get yourself belonging to that. Um, and she work, serves um, private, a private clientele around the world. So she's available. I, everyone I interview here um, is, is available and, and accessible to, for resources. Um, so you can reach her at Leslie Hoffman medium at gmail.com or find her on Facebook under Leslie J Hoffman. But I can tell you a secret. I found you under Leslie Hoffman. <laughs> well, I'm both. <laughs> There's so many Leslie Hoffmans that there is like gazillion on Facebook. And I, I have to say hello to everybody very quickly because I'm noticing a lot of the ladies that are popping in do belong to the Women Overcoming Obstacles group. So thank you for the show. So bring in the love. Thank you. Yeah, bring it in. That's terrific. I'm so excited. Um, you, there's a couple of things. Um, we're going to talk about those decompressing tools, but I wanted to get a feel for you. Have people get it who don't know you get a feel for you. You started doing this in childhood, and what is yeah. inspiration? What's going on with that? Well, my grandmother lived with us um, in when she was getting older. And when you're a kid, you don't really really you think they're really old. And the funny thing is, Nancy, I was looking up some stuff on ancestry and I saw the year of her death oh. and she was only 63. And to me, she looked like she was 90. It was crazy. But anyway, she lived with us and she was my everything. I mean, my everything. Mm -hmm. And my dad worked for the space program that just started in California and we were being transferred to Florida and I was eight years old, seven years old. And so we left her, she went to move in with my uncle in California and we came to Florida and within six months she had a heart attack and passed. Oh, I'm so sorry. So Thank sorry. You. Yeah. But you know, it's one of those childhood imaginary angst that I was the reason that she passed because we left her, okay. right? Yeah. And so 
one night in the middle of the night, I was woken up and there she was sitting at the foot of my bed. And I wasn't scared. I wasn't afraid. It was nothing but love, you know, the old cliche love and light. But she was always my soft pillow that I could fall into. Nice. And it was the same feeling. And we had a chat. And she let me know that there were things planned for me that I could never understand at that age, but just never have fear with whatever comes my way, which is very interesting because on a spiritual level, I've never had fear. I've never been fearful of seeing dead people. I've never been fearful of talking to animals. I've never been fearful of picking up energies and vibes and all that kind of stuff. But the living scare me <laughs> and always have. Yeah, right. The living scared more scary than life. You know, growing up with the my parents who my mom is scared of a lot of things and my dad was controlling and and it's like lack of self-esteem and laugh, lack of go get and and all those childhood pains and traumas of, you know, you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not skinny enough. You're not, you're not, you're not. And so it was like a whole catch 22 life going on. Well, that's sad. Oh, that's it's crazy. I it's mean, crazy. that's how a lot of people are. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's why when I finally came into my own, when I finally realized I was good enough and I did have something worth saying, because my dad used to say, we don't, you don't have anything we want to hear, little girl, when he would get mad at me. And so, you know, that does the trauma in the back of the brain to the little girl inside that you carry her until the day you die, right? Yeah. But when yeah. I finally realized I had something to say, I think that's why I relate to these women so well in my women overcoming obstacles groups. And I think that's where the life coach healing modality just kind of really blossomed. That is inspiring. That is very cool. And, you know, I have to say, you probably experienced what most people, women experience it. And yet you found a way to uh, work through it. So I I love that the message of your grandmother sitting on the edge of the bed saying, you gotta just do it, you know? Right, right. Yeah, but my grandmother um, passed when I was 18 and she, that was the first time I ever had a spirit communication ever, didn't know what it was and didn't really pursue it, but she came in a, a kind of an energy form. I was watching um, my siblings and the oldest today and the whole color of the room, the light changed and this peace came over all of us and I'm watching my siblings and they're acting like crazy and all of a sudden they're all settling down and I, I wish she, she didn't really leave me a message except she gave me this peace and this love. And whenever I was struggling later on in life, you know, she would just show up, same color, same peaceful feeling, say, calm down, Nance, you got this, you know, and she she was, so I can really relate to grandmother love. But what, you know, but she did give you a beautiful message. I mean, having a sense of peace. Oh my gosh. How wonderful is that? Yeah. That you can't beat that. Nope. So even to this day, sometimes I feel like I'm, you know, I still do the the small person thing. And I think, I, I don't want to bug you, grandma, but I could use some of your juice. You know, could you use some of your stuff? <laughs> bug you, grandma. And I'm sure grandma's up there going, Nance, come on, <laughs> bug me. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, um, my goodness. So, yeah. so it's, yeah, it's when you finally realize in that, that switch flips to know that this is what you're supposed to do. This is the way you're supposed to move. Now that doesn't say that we can't stop and and reconfigure and go, well, you know, we have free will. Maybe I don't want to go that way and I won't go that way. Well, the universe is like, well, you know, chicky do, we tried to help you, but free will, that's what it's all about, right? Exactly. Well, it's free will. And and, uh, as I say to my clients, I said, you can do it on your own. You can ask your guardian angels for help, or you can kind of check into what the plan is, you know, and you know, either way it works, but some ways are easier than others. (laughs) And there's some of us that always take the hard way. We don't learn our lessons real well. (laughs) To God, why did you make this so hard? And they're going, (laughs) did you make it that hard? (laughs) Maybe it's the right I don't know. 
<laughs> so what are let's talk a little bit about caretaking and let's first talk about caretakers. What gets um what is a caretaker in, in your in your description? I have an idea for myself. So we'll identify caretakers and let's identify how you get yourself into a place where you're wound up tighter than a top. So okay, I think there's a misnomer about the term caretaker. Mm -hmm. um, I think people seem to think that caretakers are those professionals that decide to go into that industry, or it's a person that has been pushed or shoved or thrown into a role to help an, a loved one, a friend, um, someone close to them when that person starts becoming incapable of totally taking care of themselves. But a caretaker in this day and age can be anything and anyone that helps another person move through something that they don't quite grasp the ability to move through on their own. Um, it could also be you need to be a caretaker unto yourself and people that find that a very, very foreign concept. And that's exactly what you know, we're talking about tonight is when you are a caretaker, you have to be a caretaker for yourself. It's the old, the old uh, airplane, put your own mask on before you can help anybody else. Absolutely. And we always forget to put our own masks on. And I just had a, a session with a beautiful woman um, yesterday. And I've said this to other people before is if you keep forgetting to put your own mask on, then you need to do something to remember you even have a mask. Good point. I love it. Right? Yeah. yeah. So bedazzle the crap out of it. Make it blitzy. Make it shiny. Make it bling. Paint it however you want. Put peacock feathers on it. Whatever you need to remind you that you have a beautiful mask that you need to put on or you're going to run out of oxygen and you're not going to be able to help those other people. Absolutely. I love, I love that you're saying and that's, that. that's whether you're helping somebody you're that's whether you're helping your father with dementia or Alzheimer's, or you're helping your mother because she has AFib and a heart condition, mm -hmm. or you're helping the family go through it all because for some reason, unbeknownst to you, they all decided that you were the one to help them through. And I say all those things I just said, because that's my story. Oh, honey. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what color is your mask? How, what, how um, do you put it on? My mask changes according to my mood, <laughs> but my mask is very opulent to where if I flash it the right way, I can get myself to flip into a better mood, a better place, a better existence. And the funny thing about my mask, and I don't, I've never told anybody this is I actually have tons of air holes and tubes coming out, not just the one for the oxygen to come in because when I need to breathe, I need a lot of holes to breathe through and I need to get that out. That's so mine has got like, it's, it probably looks like something out of a sci-fi, you know, it's got all these tubes <laughs> coming out back and forward. And <laughs> so, so it sounds like you've been through it with your family where you, well, um, you, you know, we had talked about, I was, I've seen spirits since I was a little girl and, and animals and all that kind of stuff. But my sister was always freaked out and weirded out by it. She was three years older. And so she's like, you're a freaking a weirdo. You can't play with us. I don't want you around my friends. I mean, this is all the way through high school. And then she was dating this guy and we all the families would get together and she'd look at me and she'd say, don't say a word about that stuff without, you know. And I'm like, okay. Well, in 2014, she was diagnosed with cancer. Um, mm. Just boom, out of the blue. And so the three months she went from diagnosis to death, it only took three months. That's oh. how far advanced the cancer was. Mm. So you just never know. But in those three months, I, I'm i blessed with the kind of life that I was able to put everything on hold and go stay with her and take care of her for those three months. It's like, you beautiful, beautiful earth angels of hospice. I love you, but sit over there. I'll take care of her. And if you need to, we'll, we'll call you, you know? 
Okay. So she and I had lots and lots of conversations and she wanted me to help her connect with my grandmother finally. And we had conversations and she said, I'm not scared of it anymore. I need you to help me be not scared of dying. Oh, what a gift. I mean, what yeah, a well, it was, it was, no, you speak the truth, absolute truth. So it only took about a month and I really did it very gingerly with her. When I have my private clientele, I, I have learned that I don't sugarcoat anything. Mm -hmm. I will round edges and smooth them. But I find if you sugarcoat something, then someone needs you to do that. They're not ready. Correct. They, they don't want to hear anyways. And it does them no good. It does me no good. And I don't want to waste their time. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can see that. You know, so it, it has to be a mutual thing. And, and you know, we, we can just pick up someone's vibe or we can talk to them for a short amount of time and we know if they're ready or they're not ready. Well, we right. know if we can ease them into being ready and if they're just not going to go there. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. So, yeah. I, have, I have a process of like, okay, I, I've got the big picture here. Are we going to go for the big picture or, or is there a staircase going up to this big picture? And um, sometimes there's a staircase and sometimes we spend a little time on step number three but <laughs> if they can get to the top of the steps they're in and we right uh, things like so it is um but if they stop and they don't move forward you gotta let them go yeah absolutely because they're rethinking the whole process and so they've just undone what you did for them yeah and, and you can't want something more than they want something and yeah then you end up the whole caretaker roles or or who was somebody said shirley was saying it's not a you're not caregiver no you're not caretakers you're caregivers which i think yeah. is a Shirley, um, I, I'm going to tell a tale out of school. Shirley is one of my private clients, and she's also in my membership group. Shirley, ha, we we have moved her between her and I working together. We have moved her so far down her path mm -hmm. that it's absolutely amazing. And Shirley is a beautiful caregiver. She's an actual caregiver to her son, mm -hmm. so she knows this intimately of what this is about. And so I, you know, I surely I'm so blessed that you're here. I'm, this is fabulous. But anyways, finally, one day, my sister had been sleeping and she left her, the closet door in her bedroom was open. And I know she was lucid because she had not had her pain medicine yet. Mm -hmm. And she started screaming my name. I was across her house. I came running into the room. I'm like, oh my God, what's wrong? What's wrong? She said, I saw them, Leslie. I saw the butterflies. I saw them. I'm like, excuse me, what are we talking about? And she said, I woke up and I know I was awake. And she said, I looked at the closet and the butterflies flew out of the closet and then flew around me over by the fan and then flew black back into the closet. Beautiful. And I looked at her and I said, welcome to my world, baby girl. Oh, oh, nice. Beautiful. And um, she was not afraid anymore. She oh. was not afraid. So right before she passed, before she kind of went comatose, the last conversation we had is, and um, excuse my language, but she said to me, Leslie, go take your shit and help people. Really? Because, because if you could do that for me, you could do that for everybody. Oh, what a blessing. She, she gave you a blessing on her, on her way out. Just like, and, I, yeah. and I hate to say this, but I'm a huge proponent one of my mantras that I make everybody always recite every single day is there is a silver lining in the crap there is a silver lining in the dark there is a silver lining in every trauma there is a silver lining we have to find it and uncover it mm -hmm. and my silver lining was that she gave me permission she gave me the self-esteem to know that if I could do that for her, I can do that for others. Beautiful. And so I became a woman on a mission. <laughs> Good for you. And, and that's how, that's why you and I met. Yes. It's because the first place, when I went back up North from home here in Florida, the first place I found was New Hampshire metaphysical. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's why you and I met because of yeah. my sister. Yeah. God bless her. God bless you. You do some amazing work. We met at some of the fairs and things, and you um, really have a unique way of channeling, which 
<laughs> it's like, wow, you go, girl. Um, and uh, I just wanted to just get go back around and the work that you did with your sister mm -hmm. had to be exhausting. It was exhausting. So you add that on top of the fact that I lived 45 minutes away. Right. And so I would be at her house by 6 a.m. in the morning so her husband could go to work. And then I'd be there until midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And then I would drive 45 minutes home. And then I would come home. And one of the ways I would decompress from a full whatever hours of that day and whatever had happened, because there's, you know, when 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 someone is is under hospice care and they're at home, my sister, it, it was amazing. My sister was so blessed. So many people loved her. She worked in uh, a grocery store as a bakery manager for 30 some odd years in the town. Then she retired from there. She went to work for the city. Everybody knew my sister. Everybody loved my sister. It was like a revolving door of people coming in and going out, wanting to see my sister. I almost felt like I needed to give, you know, numbers at the door. I bet. Yeah. So there was a lot of different energies coming in. And the majority of the energy coming in was grief and sorrow because they were coming to see my sister who was on her way to pass. I would come home and I have realized that I'm a huge proponent of physicalness mm -hmm. because when you're moving and your body's having to do things that opens your whole energetic and fiber system to absorb. That's why I do walking meditations now. I can't just sit and ohm. I have to walk and I, and I have a loop in my condo that I walk while I meditate. Excellent. But I would come home and just start screaming. And I used to think to myself, okay, I got to be really quiet because I have neighbors. <laughs> and I don't want 911 showing up at my door, but I would, I'm a closet crier because of my childhood. I was always told you got something to, you, you need to cry, go in your room. We don't need to see it. Right. So it's very rare that people will see me cry, but I would come home and I would just break down oh. and I would run and I would jump and I'd walk my loop in my condo and I would kick the, the, the bottom of the bed and I would beat on the pillows and I would allow myself the physicality of just grief release. Goodness. Yeah. And there were some nights when I thought it would never stop. Mm -hmm. but okay. one of my biggest lessons I learned is don't hold it in. Okay. You can't hold it in on a constant and continual basis and expect to be okay. I hear you. Yeah, it's absolutely. I'm with you on that one. And uh... right. And then first thing in the morning, I am blessed. I am so blessed. I live right on the beach. So my balcony, when you go out my sliding glass doors, my balcony, I see the dunes and I see the beach. Beautiful. And so in the mornings, a, I'm a huge proponent and I used to sleep till whenever, but spirit and universe is like, nope, six o'clock, get up, sun's up, sun's going to come up. You got to get there. So I learned how to do my coffee pot on auto. <laughs> so I'm, I'm All right. Yeah. But I will walk out on the balcony and sit there and wait for sunrise. And I say my pleases and my thank yous and what I need for the day. And I let nature suck it all off of me. Mm. Okay. I just, and, it, and you don't have to be on the beach. You can be sitting in your easy chair, looking out the window. Mm -hmm. You could be looking at a bowl of flowers sitting on your breakfast table. You can have a plant every day sitting in the kitchen. Yep. And you walk in there and I have an orchid and I have a Christmas cactus that my daughter gave me last year for Christmas. And I get up every morning and I open my bedroom door and my, my orchid is right there. And then my Christmas cactus is near the kitchen. And I walk in, I'm like, good morning, beautifuls. Oh, how nice. And I just, it makes me feel better. Because what does a caregiver do? wants everybody else to feel better. So I figure if I tell my orchid, good morning, beautiful, it makes her feel better. <laughs> yeah. And in the process, I feel better. It's a win-win. You got the exchange going. That, that's that's right. Yeah, the exchange going in your life. Not some, I see people um, 
you know, blinders on and then they just keep moving, moving forward, moving forward. I have to do this. I need to do this. Oh, what time is it? I better be over here. But you, you wake up with your no blinders on and you see the beauty. And well, if you wake up for blinders on, you don't really know what's happening around you. And if you don't know what's happening around you, you don't know what's happening to you. And if you don't know what's happening to you, how can you figure out if you need to let something go? True that. To that. You know, if you're constantly letting your cup run dry, who's going to fill it? Nobody's going to fill your cup. That's one of our biggest problems that I find, especially with a lot of women, because the way we were raised, and it's just the female DNA, I think, is that we expect somebody else to take care of us. We expect somebody else to make us happy. We expect somebody else to smooth the road. We expect, we expect, we expect. And then we're really, really upset and pissed off and irritated when they don't give us what we think we need, but yet they never knew we wanted them to do it. Because we don't know. Often I talk to a lot of people who, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I think I want to, but I know I'm not happy, but I don't know. And so the, the language is, I don't know, I'm not happy with you. This is a problem. And if the language could own your own, if the language changes where you're owning your own divinity or you're owning your own needs or you're owning your own visions of what life could be wonderful, you share them, then you can create something. But I, I'm just saying that owning yourself is a big step to. That's huge. See you right there. You hit the nail on the head, owning yourself. It's huge because those other people that we expect them to make us happy, they have no clue that we expect them to make us happy. They're trying to make themselves happy. Or they're overwhelmed because they want to make us happy, but they and it's a moving right. target. You don't even know what it is. So they're frustrated and angry. And then you don't have that exchange, right. that beautiful exchange that you have with the plants. Hello, beautiful. And they're like, just, that's what I do. I'm beautiful, you know? And uh, you learn a lot from them. People can learn. Yeah, but I, I find that if you do something physical, Physical. Your release is a lot greater, a lot faster, a lot smoother than if you try to analyze it out and think it out. Because if you're moving, you're not, you, you don't really have that. You're thinking about your movement. Yeah. You're not thinking about what you're trying to release. And a lot of times it's like osmosis, reverse osmosis. It just goes. And you're not even trying. It just goes. Hey. Okay. It's kind of <laughs> like when you've had a really, really, really crappy day. And maybe stuff didn't go right and they didn't hear you the way you meant it and they perceived it wrong and the boss irritated you and you didn't get the deadline done and and then your mom's reminding you that you didn't bring so and so over and she needs it by you know this time and all that kind of stuff and it's pressure and it's pressure and it's pressure. And so you suck that into the fibers of your being. That's not just an energetic thing. I mean, that's that's a physical thing. And, and it's a physical thing that actually can make you sick. Right. Stress is a huge killer. So we got, you know, around. I would venture to say the majority of heart attacks and strokes is because it's compounded stress after year, after year, after year, after year. So if you can find yourself something to do, and it can be something so silly as cranking up your favorite music and dancing it out for 10 minutes. I love that idea. I always forget to do that. That is a, I, that is awesome. Just whatever. Up for 10 minutes. A lot of times I will turn on a podcast <laughs> yeah, and I will um, mirror it off of my iPhone. I'll mirror it onto my big screen TV. And then if, if I want to see something, if not, I just leave it as a podcast and audio and I listen to it. Well, I loop my condo. I walk around my couch. I walk through the kitchen. I walk down the hallway and I come back around my couch and I'm listening. And as with, I don't even realize an hour's gone by. I've done 12,000 steps and I feel great now. I feel exhausted, but all that crap and all that garbage from the entire, it's gone. It's just gone. Mm -hmm. And how much more healthy is that than sitting down and having five cocktails because you can't deal with what happened today? Well, that's true. Although you could walk with the cocktails, but I'm thinking well, about- a glass of wine is good for the heart. <laughs> <laughs> but but not for Jack and Jack and Cokes, right? Right. But you're what, what you're doing is also what I hear you saying is you're walking it off, but your new thoughts are coming in. Usually right. the 
podcasts are probably something inspirational or something positive, or my favorite murder is, you know, one of my favorite, but maybe not that, but, um, but just to listen, you're taking your mind away from that heartbreak and you're moving it to, but there is more to life. And, uh, and you're, yeah. And you're releasing it. I mean, I have, I don't know why all of a sudden I got into this, but I, I'm, and most of them are really old, but I love the first 48. You know, the first 48, it's like, you know, it's, it's these different homicide departments in all these different cities. And most of them were like 2014, 2013, but I record a ton of them and I put them on. And as I come toward the couch, I can see the TV and I'm like, okay, I've seen enough. I can hear it. But, or it's like, put on, you know, Nancy's latest and greatest podcast and just listen and get the inspiration and see what flows. Well, yeah, there's, there's so many out there. There's so many beautiful <laughs> podcasts where people are really trying to put in a, a whole new spin on life or a whole new thoughts into your head. And when you're in that, oh my God, wound up tighter than a top and you're ready to explode um, or the pressure cooker is on, you need to re, uh, reset your mind on something else. You, yeah, it, refocus. And, yeah. and I would say for like a lot of the people that listen to your podcast, that would be one of the beautiful things because they're used to you. They're used to the way you do things. They, and if they, if they come in and watch the live podcast as it happens, then they appreciate and they enjoy you. So everybody kick on Nancy's podcast. Oh my God. You have, I, on your website, you, I know I just saw four and you have more for the next button. I do. Yeah. So yeah. No. Everybody kick the next button and go find the old ones because they're just as good. Well, this is podcast number 182, guys. See, there you go. Barbara, Barbara Clinton. Love Barbara. Hi, Barbara. She says, love your podcast, Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. I see your own, yeah. Every, almost every time. And uh, I love Barbara too. She's awesome. And uh, um, so putting things into your mind. Mm-hmm that change the station of, of where you're going is right. a really awesome way to decompress and reminding yourself um, that there's that there's another picture there's another flow um, of information there's another flow of love that, that mm-hmm. you know there's another way of living um, and that's a huge huge way and it, it, and it putting um, a spiritual aspect to it and I'm not talking about trying to rise above the pain but just saying and you can invite your guardian angel to walk with you. Right. And right. Say, I mean, I call every single day, morning and night. I call on Archangel Michael and Raphael. Yeah. Oh, I every love single that. morning and every single night. And what I do is I have this routine that I do, but part of it is I call on them and I ask them to send and pour over me their healing and protective energies. And I ask that and I say it a certain way in the morning when I get up. And then I say it a certain way in the evening when I go to sleep, because I ask them to protect me and heal me while I sleep, you know, because there's a lot of juju that floats around in the nighttime hours. <laughs> you're setting that you're also another partly self-care is you're setting a tone for yourself at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. And I love that. I really love that. How many times do we flop into bed going, oh my God, what a day that was. I can't wait to just fall asleep, but to say, like you said, your please and thank yous, which I love that. And then, and then the come heal me, bring me in, yeah. uh, whatever. Yeah, I asked that. I asked them to, you know, from the moment I hit the bed to the moment that the sun rises and and I get up, please protect me and heal me from all harm, sickness, and disease. And thank you, thank you, thank you for today. Thank you for tomorrow, and thank you for yesterday. And that's, I mean, thirty seconds, and then boom, I'm out. Yeah. But, and also in a, just one other thought is uh, puppy love. Puppy I, love. I, don't have, I don't have any animals myself. Well, we have a parrot. My mom has a parrot. My daughter, I've got grand pups. But um, because I travel so much and I'm in and out, it's not fair, you know, and I love dogs. I'm, I'm a, I've always had dogs as a kid. But um, I always, I have lots of neighbors that have little dogs here in the condo. and any and every time I could go out and get some puppy love, you just feel the stress melting right off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and it's great because I don't have to clean up after him. I don't have to feed him. I don't have to water. <laughs> I just go get my puppy love and I'm good to go. 
you know, I'm a grandmother. I get the grandkid love. And, and yeah. they, have a, they have a puppy, they have a dog and uh, it's just, yeah, it is. And then, and then I go home, you know, and uh, of course I miss him terribly when I go home, but we got my fill. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, uh, there's a statistic or right? something, I don't, I don't really can't quote a statistic to be honest with you, but something that I've heard many times is that when there's a, a couple or there's somebody who's a, a caretaker in a relationship or a caregiver in a relationship and, and somebody who's ill, who has to, you know, be cared for, um, the um, healthcare industry is generally con more concerned for the health giver, caregiver, than they are for the person who is having the problems because health caregiver goes beyond their means. Mm -hmm. So setting, um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about setting boundaries, feeling compelled to go beyond your means to care for somebody that you love and um, maybe not asking for help or maybe the resources aren't there to ask for help. And I'm sure you've been in those shoes. I know I have been. And um, you, especially it's with your sister, you, you were a little bit beyond your means for three months. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I was so thankful that hospice was there and that the nurses were there on a continual basis. Um, you know, there are issues and things, you know, they're coming into your house. And so it's, sometimes it's a weird, you know, combination until everybody gets used to everybody. And, and the family may not like the way the caregiver, you know, the hospice person or the caregiver has to do it. And the care, they're like, don't want to step on your toes. So it's a weird dynamic at the beginning. Um, but we were blessed to where they were, no matter what was happening, they were there. Oh, good. And yeah. yeah, a lot. I mean, I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. I was never trained or any of that kind of stuff. So I always took a back seat to the professionals mm -hmm. when things needed to be done. I just let them know that I was there okay. and things like that, because you know, trying to figure out the landscape of the healthcare system is a whole, I mean, you know, I mean, like you said, you had to go through that too. And it, and I was very blessed in the fact that I really didn't have to delve into it too much. Good, good. And yeah. In fact, when my father, um, my father had dementia and as he's dementia progressed, um, I've been, I, I keep saying I've, I've been really blessed and I don't know, maybe that's the chicken in me, you know, it's the, 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 I don't have enough self-esteem stuff, something or confidence in me. I don't know what the word is, but anytime everything, something started coming down the pike that I could pick up on or something happened, like when my sister got sick and then when my dad got sick, I always went upstairs and I'm like, look, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. I can't do this without help. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I just need strength. You know, whether it's God, universe, source, whatever you believe in, it's like, I need help and I can't do this by myself. I need you to show me the way. That and so, it always came through. So important for everyone to do that, that you, that was per exactly to me, in my opinion, was the exact perfect thing to do. I can't do this by myself. I don't know how to do this. So you, be you became a, um, a partner with spirit, with source. And that's right. a huge, huge spiritual tool for when you have to go beyond your means. Well, and a lot of people don't know this, but I, I can talk about it now because everything's okay. Um, my, well, my dad passed in 2021. My mother's in her nineties. Oh and goodness. she still lives independent. She still lives by herself in the house. I'm over there all the time, but she, She's, yeah. she's still kind of good to go, but my mom has a lot of health issues. Okay. She has um, AFib, she has a pacemaker, she has two artificial hips, she has one kidney, she has a plate in her wrist, what on is. and on and on. She's got arthritis, on and on and on. Well, at the end of last year, she couldn't breathe, was having a hard time going to just to the mailbox. Got her to the doctor. The doctor said, once you go to the emergency room, want to have a scan done. Long story short, she had a, a leak of fluid drained off of her lungs, the mm -hmm. pleural sac. She had pleural effusion. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, that, of course, they want to do a follow up with a pulmonologist. We couldn't get in for three months. 
got in with the pulmonologist. He goes, oh, everything's fine. You're checking all the boxes. I haven't lost weight, blah, blah, blah. He comes back and I looked at him and I knew, and he said, according to this, you have cancer. He yeah. says, it looks like you have large B cell lymphoma. Um, okay, so my world just flipped upside down and rocked off its axis yet again. Oh, well, baby, yeah. So I came home that night and I looked and I'm like, I can't do this. You know, first my, my sister, then my dad, now mom, I can't do this. I don't know what to do. I need help. And I'm talking to all my dead people upstairs. And I'm like, dad, look, I need your help. You know, she was your wife. And to my sister, I'm like, Tony, look, that's your mother. And my grandmother, I'm like, that's your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like guilt tripping them like crazy. But um, after lots of tests and lots of hurry up and waits and on and on and on, and I have to say, I do energy healing movement. Um, I've taken a lot of lessons and classes and courses with Charlie Goldsmith, who is an, a celebrity Australian healer. Yeah. Um, and I contacted a lot of my healer friends and we worked on her. I worked on her an hour a day, every single day. She, unbeknownst to her, I would never have told her. Yeah. I had friends that worked on here. Finally, after five months, we went in, she got another CAT scan, she got another PET scan, she got more blood work, and they came back and he said, we don't know what happened, but there's no signs of cancer. Oh, gosh. Oh. And I'm thinking to myself, we know what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, a divine intervention. But talk to anybody and everybody that you need, even if you think it's fact or fiction, whether you think they can't hear you because they're your mother, brother, sister, great aunt, grandmother, Uncle Johnny's son that's in spirit, ask, ask, ask. Everybody upstairs that loves you is waiting for you to ask. They are. They really are. I mean, they can read our minds in a heartbeat, but there's rules and regulations. And even the angels, they can't step in until yeah. we ask right absolutely so it's just do what you got to do to move through with beauty and grace that that's my mantra for the for the rest of the year and the rest of my life it's it's beauty and grace calm beauty and grace love it love it love it love it love it um i wanted to just check back a little bit with um you know where people could find you you're on mm -hmm. Facebook at Leslie J. Hoffman or Leslie Hoffman. And then Leslie Hoffman is my personal page. You can, it, and it's public, so you can get me there. Leslie J. Hoffman is my woo woo page where all my good stuff is and, and all my events are posted and everything. That is a public page. You do not have to belong to Facebook to see those pages because they're completely open and public. Beautiful. And if people want to check into this, this group that you're, um, you're right. I have, I have, um, actually I have three groups. One is a all inclusive male, female group called alchemy on overdrive on oh. Facebook. And that is a, that is a group of it's all positivity. It's people that believe in the woo or don't quite believe in the woo that just are curious, metaphysically curious. It's all about love and light and good stuff. Um, and then I have a women's only group that is free. The alchemy is free. I have a group, Women Overcoming Obstacles in tagline, Let's Be Woo, Women Overcoming Obstacles. That is a free female only Facebook group where we share inspirations. I do a little bit of coaching. I do uh, Facebook lives on Thursdays on my Leslie J page and I stream it in. I do thankful Thursday. I pull Oracle cards for free for people that show up at Thursday at 11, 11 AM Eastern time. Okay. So that women overcoming obstacles, that is a free group. You, you come in, you interact, we have a good time. Then one step above that, I have women overcoming obstacles, a female empowerment society for spiritual and metaphysically minded females. That is a subscription-based group. You pay to belong to that. You can do the free group. And then when the doors open, we if you decide to join the subscription, we just pop you on over. 
into that group. Um, I did a live today. I did uh, October Oracle card pulls. I do energy healing. We've had seven full and new moon ceremony manifestations, releasing what no longer serves you. Um, and depending on the level that you join at, uh, the higher level, when you pay for those, you get free private one-on-one -on -one time with me. I think it's wonderful. I really recommend that. Thank you. It's, we're yeah. having a really, really good time. The women are beautiful souls. Um, they bounce off of each other and they, the integration has been fabulous. We've had no issues. It's like, stepping in a puddle of love and that sounds so uh, icky sometimes to women but you know what when when you think a certain way and you're metaphysically curious or you want to know you know that there's more to life than just this you want to be around women that know what you're thinking and feel the same way yeah. because there's such power in the energy of numbers well the, the numbers and then also yeah you um match the energy of the people around you. And then, and it goes up and up and up. I can't imagine. It must be very powerful. That's right. I mean, I have goosebumps right now, just talking about these fabulous females and it's, it's, there's no guilt tripping. There's no, ah, oh, come on. You know, it's all like they, nobody shoves anybody off the cliff. We might shove you off the cliff, but we've got that safety harness attached to you. I love that. So yeah. that at any time you need to come back, we're going to be there pulling you back in. You know, and 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 I I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable at times because if you're not uncomfortable, you're not going to grow. Okay. Very nice. You know, think about it. You've got the seed pod and it has to crack open before the plant can come out of it. True that. If it doesn't crack open, it's just going to continue to get nasty and it's just going to decompose there's a saying it's it's sometimes um more painful to stay in the bud than it is to blossom and, and you're and when you say you, you don't the seed pod doesn't open it it atrophies and dies it's so mm -hmm. true so true in life right right and and you know i've taken upon myself to push and shove a little bit but it's a twofold thing because if I push and shove and make you move and groove, then I've just made myself move and groove too, along with you. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's like, this is a selfless job that isn't a job. It's, and when I do my meditations in the morning, I always thank upstairs for allowing me to bring together a beautiful group of people that I can help move and groove forward and they do the same for me. So it's, it's, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, is this all through Facebook too, or we don't have any magical inroads. You just go to Facebook and find it. It's super easy peasy because most of the people, not all, but most of the people, I don't have an actual website. All of my clientele and I am so blessed to have worldwide clientele has always been word of mouth. Oh, how awesome. My yeah. clientele, when you and I were together, start at the psychic fairs, sitting table to table. You know, when I first started, everything has grown off of that organically. Yeah. And so I love it that way. I'm going to have to do a, a website sooner or later. I know I will. But I love it that way because... I get an energy exchange of personalities before anything else happens. And I've been really blessed to where it's always just worked out. And I know if I've been recommended by one of my clients, then I'm already set out to succeed. Oh, I love that. Because they already know who I am and what I'm about and that I help this person. You break, it's very good. Make my heart feel good. Oh, no, well, thank you. Thank you. I mean, it, it, it can be a struggle. I won't lie. And it, there can be droughts at times, but then that's life. So when there's a drought in life, you just figure something else that you might want to be interested in to bide your time until the drought goes away. Yeah, true that, true that. And hang in there and keep it positive. Uh, 
that makes the, the other aspect of caretaking. You're holding space for mm -hmm. um, people to come in and there's a drought or or you get an influx of lots of people who um, you're helping them to transform. That in itself is a caregiving position right. where you have to care for yourself while you're holding space or while you're sitting in the drought or while you've got way more than you could possibly do. And I'm sure you have some, that's those same tools, which is please and thank yous in the morning. And um, when, when it sneaks in and the drought is there. And so then you got the voices talking to you, you know, this is never going to work or whatever they say, mm -hmm. what, what's your go-to favorite go-to tool? You've given me a few. Have you given um, me? You know what, when there's, when there's a drought, and the gremlins start talking. Yeah. That's when I go find those podcasts. Okay. That say, yeah, you can do this. That's when I really go dig into those. I've got a couple um, that I, I really get with. And another thing is, is a super guilty pleasure. I'll just veg out on the couch and just watch stupid stuff on TV. Yes, I yes, can't. stupid stuff. And yeah. I mean, what's stupid to me might not be stupid to another. And, you know, so it, it, that's just a phrase. I'm not throwing any kind of shade. No shade. Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm just, when I say stupid stuff, it's stuff that you can just zone into and the whole world goes away. You yeah. know, now, whether that's murder mysteries or the first 48 or 90 day fiance or survivor, or, you know, a bunch of funny, funny movies. It doesn't matter whatever works for you. And it's just like, okay, I'm sitting on the couch. You know, I have my remote and nobody bothered me and I'm good to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true that it turns your mind off when the mind is just moving ahead and um, telling you things that you shouldn't, it, it just, they're not helpful. And you just need to turn it the frick off, you know, yeah. I like that mindless. Um, and it, it basically, for me, I do that same bad habit too, but it's not a bad habit. It's it, when I turn that part of my mind off, the creative part of my mind starts clicking in the background. And so by the end of my, whatever I had to do, I start to have different ideas, more creative. See, but, and, and how I justify that is I call it tools. They're tools. They're tools that we use. It's not just blatant me time because, you know, a lot of people think, oh, well, that's, that's just, a, you know, that's not conducive to anything. That's just me time. How self-absorbed. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's the point. Okay, we go all the way back to that's your mask. That me time is your oxygen. Yeah, that is your self-care. And, you know, the, the, the term self-care has been so used and abused that it's almost a cliche now. You know, yeah. for some people, it does mean bubble baths. For me, it's like, forget it. I'm not a bath person, you know? So it's, and people have used that in, in jokes and all that kind of stuff, but it's really a serious thing, especially when you're absorbing other people's energies and or you're putting out so much of yourself into another to get them through something. Right. Exactly. And of, yeah. 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 And a lot of times, like we, we hit upon before, a lot of it is not our decision that we consciously made. It's just a place we find ourselves in that we had to go to to be able to help another human being. And that is what holding space that you mentioned is all about. And it's so holding that space for another human being to be free to do what they need to do when they need to do it without any regard for anything around them because they know you're there to take care of it. Exactly. Yeah, and they, it, that there's somebody that sees them, that's there. When we remind people that they're not alone just by showing up, we can also remind them, you know, there's, there's other spirit showing up too. But when you're in that place, there's many places that we can go to where you can't feel spirit at all. You, it's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Angel, are you kidding me? So um, we are earth angels. Um, yeah. 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 And, and there are so many earth angels. All you have to do is just look around to me. Every, every person that went to school that made the conscious decision 
to become a nurse, to become a doctor, to become a physical therapist, to become a firefighter, to become a police, whatever in that communal help situation that they consciously made a decision and put money out and put time out and put effort out to do that for other people. Those are earth, true earth angels too. You know, it's like, I do what I do and you do what you do. And we made the conscious decision to do it, but those people risk themselves on a daily basis. They do. You know, whether it's risking catching disease in a hospital or, you know, in the line of duty, whatever it is, those are, you know, those so are amazing people. Those we're are caregivers people. on the light worker side, you mm -hmm. know, they're caregivers in the physicality of it all. And they just, I'm just for them. Yeah. It's crazy. I know. Yeah. They, they have a, but see, and I remember you when you were put in the caregiver role of flying back and forth to California. Right. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. The you know, and it's not something that you chose. You just had to do it because there was no one else to take that place. Right. I loved every minute of it. And I was pooped. <laughs> <laughs> and it, uh, that kind of, but uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, there was that, um, well, the, the third little boy came came along and I was there for about three weeks and um, brought my computer with me and uh, took a couple clients, ran upstairs and made sure the baby was fed so mom could have a nap, made a dinner, cleaned everything up, went back and did a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> you did what you had to do in the moment when you had to do it. And one other thing that I want to touch on is being able to release other people's energies that you absorb while you're doing your due diligence. Yes. Great. That's point. Huge. Thank you. I was going to say, what is the next? Huge. Yeah. Please talk about that. Give it some more. Well, people are like, well, I, you know, they're like this and I'm like, well, you just sucked up somebody's energy. And they're like, well, how do we know? And I'm like, well, is this you normally? Well, no. Well, you sucked up some, uh, the person you were around, whether they like this normally. Yeah. Well, you just sucked up their energy. I do something really, really simple. When I get up in the morning, before I go to bed, it's part of my routine. I say to everybody and anybody that will listen upstairs, I take a nice deep breath and I let it out. And then I say, I release all energy that does not belong to me and does not serve me a greater good. And I take a super deep breath in and I blow it out real hard three times. Okay. I want you to say that again. And I okay. want to take their notebooks out. <laughs> I write this down. This down. <laughs> I take a deep cleansing breath and I blow it out. And then I say to the universe, I release all energy that does not belong to me in that. And that is not a beautiful, loving, positive form. And then I blow it out three times. And then I take another breath in, cleanse out. And then I say, I release all my negativity and all energy that is holding me back with blockages. And I blow that out really hard one long time because sometimes you can absorb somebody else's energy and then it internally comes into, becomes a blockage with you. It does. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I make sure that I add myself in there right after I add other people, get rid of those other people. Now let's get rid of my stuff too. Right. Yeah. And then I just breathe normal. And I say, I call back all of my energy in a beautiful, loving, healthy, positive form to carry on. <sighs> And I do that twice a day, right after I get up, when I do my thing, my pleases and thank yous. And I do that right before I, I close my eyes after I lay down in bed. Okay. And just the intentional act, because it, you know, it's all about intention. It's all about intention. Yeah. So just the intentional act has a huge psychological release as well as the emotional and physical and energetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, intention is, um, and also, you know, this reminded me of intention. I was talking to my students the other day, and I said, you build your intention and to, to, to maybe do mediumship or do uh, connect intuitively to something, and you set your intention that this will be ease with ease and grace and clarity, and then they and then they they say all that, and then just before they say the reading, it says, "I'm not sure if I'm right about this. I'm not sure what I'm, 
I, I'm not good at this at all. I'm like, which one is your intention here, honey? A little bit of self-esteem issue there. A little self-confidence. Take to the intention and trust it because there will always be doubt and there will always be um, gremlins that, that are telling you going, rah, rah, rah. And, and you know, sometimes when you're creating something that's not quite there yet, mm -hmm. it takes mm -hmm. faith and trust. So trust your intentions. Well, and also you said the word gremlins and I use that word a lot. And um, I took a course to decide if I really want to do this subscription membership because I want to do it five years ago, but I didn't have the, I didn't think I had enough to say, okay. right? Oh, please. So, please. Yeah. The gremlins, the gremlins, the gremlins, those voices, those voices. And finally, it's like, you know what? Just do it. What's the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst thing can happen? Is there going to be blood and bone sticking out? No. Is there going to be bankruptcy and foreclosure? No. Is there going to be scrapes and band-aids and surgeries because I failed? No. Is this going to kill me? Probably not. Right? So I put, you just, I visualize, you take all your gremlins and you put it in a wheelbarrow or a truck and you just drive that thing right off the cliff. Just dump them right off the cliff. Now they will crawl back up, but while they're still down the cliff, go as fast and hard as you can. <laughs> as hard as you can. Fast as hard as you can until they get back up on that cliff. I love that. I love that. And, uh, and and then they come up the clip and you say, well, too bad I already did it. You know, That's right. It's already done. And I didn't die and I'm not in the hospital and I still have my house and the, and the bank didn't foreclose on anything and nothing. And I didn't lose my best friend. So, you know, it's too bad. <laughs> yeah. So turn those gremlins into, and there's silver lining in every one of those gremlins. So to give them some work to do. That's yeah. right. That's right. And uh, go collect all the garbage out in, you know, or go, you know, Go weed the yard. <laughs> yard. Oh. <laughs> My mom needs your yard weeded. Go weed. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this has been amazing. I, I, Leslie, I've had a blast talking to you. For well, thank you so much for inviting me. It's been so long since I've talked to you. This is like old home. Well, it so is. It so is. We'll have to do this again. For I sure. tell you what, when, next time I get up into New England, you and I are going to go have to do lunch. Oh, yes. Do lunch. Definitely. Have to do lunch. So I, I want to just, before we um, break, I just wanted to remind you, it's Leslie J. Hoffman on Facebook, and you can reach her um, through an email. Oh, could you say what your email is? Um, Leslie Hoffman medium at gmail.com. Hoffman, H-O-F-F-M-A-N. Okay, perfect. And um, check her out on Facebook. I also wanted to tell you about you know, angelscapes.net where I have these podcasts most Tuesdays at seven o'clock for about an hour. And I have a lot of resources here and I, that are available to you. Um, so you can find me at angelscapes.net. The podcasts are um, on YouTube. You can connect to all the podcasts through my um my website, but you can also any podcast outlet, you can find the podcasts. Um, and I'll go on YouTube and look for Angelscape, so you'll find it. I offer mentorships, I offer uh readings and mediumship as well. Um, and um, but and my favorite thing to do every Tuesday night is to offer people who can help you on your soul powered living, on your path to your um entrainment, your 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 manifesting, your unfolding. And that's what we're here to do is to find joy in our lives and to manifest um, our best healthy self. So for now, thank you, Leslie, for coming on board. And I send you all blessings um, from spirit and inspiration to be the best you can and stay safe and have fun. Thanks again. Thank you for joining the Angelscapes podcast. We hope you've gained new insights and inspiration for your journey to uncover and access your soul's power. For more information and a deeper dive into finding clarity in your life, go to angelscapes.com. Remember to subscribe so you can be part of the discussion. It may just change your life. See you next time.